Hi, in this video, I'll be talking about ketone bodies. So generally, there are three ketone bodies, acetone, acetoacetate, and beta-hydroxybutyrate. So why they are called ketone bodies? So let's talk about chemistry. Basically, if you see all the three structures, you can see a keto group in all of them. So they are definitely chemically ketone. And bodies means something which is insoluble substance, though it turns out that ketone bodies are highly soluble in blood and also in urine. So ketone body, ketone bodies, the bodies term is kind of a misnomer. Whatever it is, the ketone bodies are important reserve fuels, which are specially used by the brain in a starved state when the sources of nutrient is limiting. So in this video, I'll be talking about the synthesis, utilization, and use of kidney body, especially in context of a starved state. So stay tuned to the end of the video, and if you haven't yet subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. Now, in normal state, we have carbohydrate, protein, or fat in our dietary input, right? And different substances of like these have different calorific values, like protein and fat has protein and uh, carbohydrate has kind of a caloric va calorific value near four kilocal per gram whereas fat has higher calorific value even if fat has higher calorific value under normal substances body would try to utilize carbohydrate as to generate energy because it's an easy peasy source for the body right but imagine a starved state in starved state all of the external calorific input or the food intake is down right so the body has to rely on its own reserved source to make energy during that state so first body would use all its glycogen reserves and body's main glycogen reserves are in liver and in muscle glycogen right so they would break down glycogen by glycogenolysis and utilize the glucose to generate energy for fast few phase but eventually after when the glycogen reserve is gone protein reserve is gone now it has to use its own adipose tissue derived fatty acids right so the fatty acid oxidation would take place after all these reserves are gone and in the fatty acid oxidation the key ingredient which is produced is acetyl coa which can be channeled into various other metabolic processes to uh, get energy and also ATP is produced in this process, right? So now under the starve state, our brain cannot stop working, right? And brain needs energy even in the starve state. Without, if we don't provide energy in the brain, the whole body would collapse. So the brain needs energy. But the problem is, even if the body try to break down. Uh, fatty acid and utilize that fatty acid oxidize that fatty acid to generate acetyl coa which can be used to produce energy but the big problem for the body is body cannot utilize circulating fatty acids because blood brain barrier does not allow the brain to uptake fatty acid that's a big problem for the brain right now so brain needs some sort of source which can cross through blood brain barrier reach the brain and can fuel them in absence of glucose so what is that reserve fuel it turns out the reserve fuel that we are talking about that could be very useful for the brain in a starved state is the ketone bodies the ketone bodies are produced in the starved state in the liver and they are channeled to the brain and ketone bodies can easily cross the blood brain barrier and they can be metabolized in the brain utilized for an alternative energy source that would keep our brain going in a starved state so let's talk about utilization of energy inside the brain in a normal state in a normal state brain would utilize glucose as energy source it would do glycolysis and then channel it into the uh, krebs cycle to generate more atp and that is how normally uh, our metabolism works under a fed state so acetyl coa is one of the most important substances or metabolic uh, intermediate which can be utilized inside the brain. Keep this thing in mind because we would come back what happens in the fed state and how the body managed to get acetyl-CoA. Where does it get it from? Because in a 
in a first stage, fasted state, you cannot have glucose in the brain, right? So the glycolysis and the pyruvic acid won't be produced. So where does the acetyl-CoA come from? Okay, let's talk about ketone body synthesis. So ketone body synthesis, the primary site for ketone body synthesis is the liver hepatocytes. So inside the liver hepatocytes, what happens is the acetyl-CoA is actually uh, converted to acetoacetyl-CoA and under the fasted situation, the liver gets the uh, acetyl-CoA from fatty acid oxidation, okay? Now, acetoacetyl-CoA, I mean, this process, the first step of the ketone body synthesis is taking place by uh, the help of enzyme thiolase. And then acetoacetyl-CoA is going to be converted to HMG-CoA by the help of enzyme HMG-CoA synthase. Further, HMG-CoA is converted to acetoacetate with HMG-CoA ligase. Then, acetoacetate gets broken down into beta-hydroxybutyrate and acetone, both of which are actually ketone bodies, right? And the process is kind of uh, triggered by beta-hydroxybutyrate dehydrogenase. This converts acetoacetate to beta-hydroxybutyrate. So basically, it's a dehydrogenase enzyme, and if you notice that one of the ketone group is basically reduced to an alcohol group, so that's the difference between acetoacetate and beta hydroxybutyrate. So these three substances can now be circulated into the brain, and let's look at what happens in the brain when these substances are there in the brain. We just talk about beta hydroxybutyrate for the moment, but before we start, you have to understand right now the brain is deprived of glucose, so pyruvic acid is not getting converted to acetyl-CoA, so there is a problem of getting acetyl-CoA in the brain itself. So let's see how brain gets acetyl-CoA, then we would understand. So beta-hydroxybutyrate, let's say one of the ketone bodies, is in the brain right now, in the fasted state. It crossed the blood-brain barrier and reached the brain. Now beta-hydroxybutyrate would be broken down to produce acetyl-CoA. So beta-hydroxybutyrate would first be broken down, but beta-hydroxybutyrate dehydrogenase, and it would form the acetoacetate. From acetoacetate, the most important enzyme is beta-ketoacyl-CoA transferase, which would convert acetoacetate to acetoacetyl-CoA. And this enzyme is not present in the liver. Now imagine, this, if this enzyme is present in the liver, then it would be a futile circle, cycle, right? Liver makes ketone bodies and breaks ketone bodies as well. So this enzyme is only present in the brain. So it would break acetoacetate into acetoacetyl-CoA and further from acetoacetyl-CoA with the enzyme, help of enzyme thiolase it can break down acetoacetyl-CoA to acetyl-CoA. Now acetyl-CoA can be now channeled in the brain cells to form like I mean to be funneled into the citric acid cycle or the Krebs cycle and thereby producing ATPs and keeping our brain going, right? So now our brain would be charged even in the fasted state. So what we learned from this video, so we understood that how ketone bodies are produced, why ketone bodies are reserve fuels, and how they provide, uh, uh, I mean, energy source to our brain even in a starved state when our brain need energy but it doesn't have its ready-made fuel which is glucose. So we can totally understand that ketone bodies are good sources of energy when in, in a fasted state when uh, like uh, when glucose is not available. So that is the overall message in the video. And this is a very introductory video. We would talk about ketone body synthesis, ketone body utilization and regulation in details. So stay tuned for my next video. Thank you. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe.